The Rundown, Part 17, A Far Lost Story by John Miro. Twilight fell upon the darkening road, I found myself again alone. Street lights went out by one, by two, by three, now reveled in the shadows that had grown. Yes, I reveled in the darkness I'd known. Donald Tyson was a cop. He wasn't a soldier, not anymore. And he was never a spy. And he would never be a thorn-stabbed politician. And he never saw Counselor Underwood's ambush coming. He'd worked in Haven before. He'd worked with dozens of border states and independent fleets. He'd even worked undercover in Casty's other two sky cities. Of course he knew how they felt about the system guard. They were the boogeyman politicians and parents scared their charges with. He was ready to be spit on, to have to fight his way out of a corner, but having his pain ripped out in front of the cameras, having Salah's memory spent like Lou on a wager by a Lockla politician. Donald wanted to be angry. He was angry. Until he looked into the eyes of the people raising their fists and shouting over the press conference and the reporters, He'd seen their hate fade as Underwood helped them see just a little bit of who he really was. Was that so bad, he'd wondered? Was it so bad to admit his pain and loss if it helped Haven, S.G., and Locklaw build a lasting peace? Salah had resigned more than his commission when he went to work for the shipyards. He'd resigned his hope in the guard. They'd fought over that ignored it with stony silence. They'd bickered and teased each other. But Donald had never really understood why his brother had left the system guard. Retirement was something the two brothers had joked about involving violent hull depressurization or a big enough hole in their hides. Right up until the day before Salah's security code had disappeared from Donald's personal data store. They'd spent the last few years just a little more divided because of that. Oh, Donald still loved Salah like the brother he'd proven to be all those years ago when they met in the mine. But he'd never understood what had changed for him. The spark had disappeared from Salah's eyes the same time as his security clearance did. From that first time Donald called to tease his brother about what he was sure had been a systems glitch when Salah's name had vanished from the secure store, only to hear about Salah's surprise retirement. He'd known something had been taken from Salah, something beside his rank and badge. Salah would have crossed his arms and smiled if he were here to see this. If Salah's death now helped avert a war, perhaps Donald could get over the shock of having his pain used as a token in Locklaw's public relations. Tyson thought all of this through a curtain of numbness that separated him from the world, from the politicians and screaming reporters. Tyson's thoughts came slowly as the reporters closed in, screaming to know more about his loss. Untold military deployments, firefights, and police actions had hardened him against any sudden violence far lost through at him, but not this emotional overload. Tyson's rescuer was none other than Nicodemus Usher. The inspector had pointed him, and still struggling into the black coat now covering his system guard uniform, Donald had gratefully gone where he was led, allowing himself a moment to look around in wonder. The dragon's penchant for barren stone architecture was obvious by the massive steps of the hospital, Tall glass and metal buildings surrounded it, and peppered all around were softer, organically grown domes, bubbles, and frozen waves. It only added to his being overwhelmed. Decadent, just like Loch Law and most of the non-aligned nation-states, a cacophony of voices and desires all fighting to be heard, all tearing down each other's visions, diminishing the whole, threatening to destroy every one of those voices. The guard were better than this. The guard's founder, Admiral Robeson, understood how precarious life was here in Far Lost and how little it would take to bring another dark age, like the ones the dragons had ruled over. One vision, one certainty united them. 
align all the voices in Far Lost before the angry voices erupted into war and genocide again and drowned every precious spark of life in the system in blood. The bright blue glow coming from a space between the hospital and its neighboring building brought Donal out of his thoughts. Just in time, he realized Inspector Usher wasn't dragging him downstairs, but onto those damned transforming tiles Lockla put on every uneven surface. He wobbled, dropping his center of gravity and bracing his knees just in time to avoid sliding the rest of the way underground into one of the subterranean ringway stations that covered the city in concentric circles. Another fool's errand in service of freedom. What sane society permitted everyone within its borders unfettered access to a free transport system that went everywhere? It was a miracle they'd survived a generation without the dragons and the tears who ran the place for them before. Moments later, the inspector led them away from the large blue and white chamber into a private elevator, down into the secure government tunnels of Loch Law's ringway, and escorted him right up to a holding cell. Donald's gratitude to Usher catalyzed into anger. What would you do if it was your brother, he'd asked, and Usher's face had closed up like an airlock. The cop posted inside the small action station wouldn't be much of an obstacle if Donald decided he was walking out of here, but that wouldn't bode well for Haven SG's negotiations. So, although Donald would have loved the chance to let off some steam when Usher had dropped him here, he instead palmed the cloth tag inside his left jacket pocket when the second wall had slid open to reveal the holding cell. He felt the cool touch of the hair-thin claws snag on the arm of Usher's jacket when he grabbed him. One of those serrated edges scratched at his finger as he pulled away, leaving the tiny transmitter embedded on Usher's jacket. He smiled as the inspector walked back to the waiting ringway car without a backwards look. See you soon, inspector. The call came twenty minutes later. Donal heard Usher's voice from the room beyond his cell. Minutes later, the lip of the police officer escorting him to the elevators was curled in disgust as the elevator door closed between them, sending Donal back to the public level of the ringway. Donal pulled Usher's hat low over his eyes and field stripped his uniform of every badge and marking before the elevator doors opened again. By the time he walked back up to the damnable tile ramp, the mobile terminal in his pocket was vibrating. He pulled it out and watched a wireframe outline of Locklaw magnify down to the street level. The tracker he'd planted on Usher glowed a brilliant yellow, perfect reception. Donald smiled. He trotted down the sliding ramp to the counterclockwise ringway line and leapt inside the closing door of the ringway car that would take him to Usher. You have been listening to The Rundown, a far lost story written by John Miro. Learn more at servingworlds.com. Opening music, Everything is Not What It Appears, kindly provided by Nate Maingard at natemaingard.com. Closing music, Full On by Kevin McLeod of incompetech.com. If you like what you hear, you can become a patron and support more stories at patreon.com slash servingworlds. Thanks for listening. See you next week.